Hey, we are back. Welcome to episode 12, where we try to get a mithril hatchet from a basilisk. Haven't started doing that yet. Don't know if it's going to happen. I think it's like a 1 in 128 drop or something like that. Uh, and if we do that, then we level a whole bunch of skills. Wood cutting, fire making, fletching, construction. Uh, I'm going to deposit my crap right now, and just for shits and giggles, I'm going to go talk to the Slayer Master to see if he maybe possibly gives us the basilisk task. Because if he does, that would be great. If not, that's okay. We'll just go fight them. Cockatrice. No, the other thing that turns you to stone. Ah, uh, well. Grab this square shield if I can. It's like an elk it. Right, we're going to Camelot. I'm gonna go ahead and elk this uh, shield I picked up real quick. Plus side, I think we need the mirror shield for be able to fight the cockatrices. And they might... Are they in this cave? I actually don't remember. I guess I'll check. I don't think I want to finish the Slayer task right now. I think 40 Slayer is a fine Slayer level. That'll be after we get some quests in our belt that we'll go back to working on Slayer tasks. Because I feel like it especially makes sense to wait on Slayer because uh, we want to get a higher combat level so we can get better Slayer Masters so we can get better streak bonuses. Right. They are in here. That's cool. It's okay, I don't think I'm going to fight any right now. I'm just going to focus on this Basilisk Mithril Axe task. Or I'll accidentally click one. I guess I may as well kill it if I'm accidentally going to click it, right? Well, that was doable. Okay, got to look for a safe spot. I assume there is one. There's always a safe spot. Oh, there's different music for the Basilisks. That's kind of funny. What has and doesn't have... Okay, this might work. That'll do. Perfect. All right. Uh, fast forwarding through pointless grinding, praying for a mithril axe drop before we run out of chaos runes. Because we run out of chaos runes, we gotta go farm swamp toads for a long time. Fingers crossed. First drop is a steel battle axe, which we actually can alk for a profit, so I will do that. But hey, it's an axe. That means he's... They drop nothing but axes, and we're going to get the axe we want real soon, right? Ooh. Crimey... Lantadime? Lantatomy? I don't know how to pronounce that one. Ooh. This guy's worth a decent amount of coins, though. Oh my god, it dropped on the third basilisk. I thought we were going to be here for hours. We're done. We did it. It's over. <laughs> Oh, I just burned a bunch of luck that would have been great for something that was more important than this stupid thing. I could have been doing wood cutting this whole time. Well, uh, thanks, folks. Episode 13. No, no, no. Let's go ahead and uh, let's do it. I'm going to warp home really fast. We're going to cut. I think we can do oak logs for the most part. No, I might need regular logs to make planks. So we'll do a couple inventories full of regular logs, bank them, and then we'll try to figure out what we're doing next. That's wild. I really thought we were going to be there for longer. <laughs> so it makes up for me not picking up the one that fell on the ground, right? I'm just going to bank everything except for this axe. So now we can do wood cutting 30, fletching 30, fire making 30, and then see what we can do about construction. Construction seems like it's kind of a mess, but let's see what we can make of it. I'm going to do, actually, let's start with oak trees to get to 30, and then I'll just chop down the regular logs for whatever else we need after that point. Yo, wood cutting 22. Let's keep going to 30. Eight to go. I might be able to get a new tree eventually. Oh, this thing swings super fast. It's kind of awesome. Guide says willow trees at 30. Okay, but nothing until 30, so oaks and regular logs until then. Got it. Oh, bird's nest. That's the first time that's happened. Search bird nest. Gold ring. Oh, that's kind of cool. Right on. Wood cutting 23. Very good.
Mithrilax is paying the bills over here. This thing is fast and successful. Woodcutting 24. This is like one of the fastest levels we've done between 20 and 30 for any skill. I love it. Okay, while we woodcut here, I'm trying to figure out exactly how many logs I'm going to need for uh, to get to 30 construction. It looks like we need 143 planks, which I think equals exactly 143 logs, but let me check that. One plank equals one log. Okay. Oak plank equals oak log. Got it. Hey, woodcutting 25. We're blazing through woodcutting. It's fantastic. I think I need... 143 logs and something like 200 oak logs. So I might switch to getting the regular logs now since they give less XP and are more annoying to catch. Farm for. We'll just fill up our log count until I hit that 143 amount. Now we don't have to put off construction. I was only putting it off because of uh, wood cutting. Okay, so reading about construction. Hi, I need an herb. Sorry, I don't have any Dr. Jekyll. I guess I could go to the bank, but he might dis despawn by then. Uh, what was I going to say? Reading ahead about construction, it looks like in addition to planks, I need nails, which is going to suck. Um, it seems like the higher the quality of the nails, the better things work. The faster it is to skill up. So it looks like I need steel nails, which I can totally make. Or at least I'm close to making, right? This is where ooh, a piece of candy gets hardcore. Steel. Steel nails is 34 smithing. Well, I can push to 34 smithing, that's not a big deal. I enjoy mining, it's pretty chill. I think that involves getting a bunch of coal, which I'll have to look into, but... So, yeah, that, that kind of changes our trajectory. Now that I know that construction is viable, I just haven't been thinking about it or researching it because of not having the mithril axe. Um, okay, so here's what I think we're doing. We are... Woodcutting 26, fantastic. We're going to take wood cutting to 30, or wood cutting to whatever we need to get it to in order to get the 200 some logs we need for construction. Uh, then we're going to take smithing to 34 so we can make steel nails. I'm going to try to save all of the steel along the way if we can, which might be, might be difficult. And then we're going to grind out construction. Then once construction's done, we should be able to very easily, borderline trivially, finish... Um, we should be able to finish fire making and fletching, no problem. And after finishing fire making and fletching, we'll uh, move on to the next thing. I'm guessing a good strategy for leveling smithing to 34 without wasting steel bars is to smelt exactly as many steel bars as we need for the nails, bank those, don't touch them, and then with the remaining nails that we create, use those to, uh, to level up smithing to 34. I think that that's reasonable. So once all that's done, construction, fletching, all that fun stuff, then we're going to do quests, finally. It's been the promise, right? It's the name of the series, get the quest cape. I just don't want to break from questing too much if we can avoid it, especially with these skills that are still at like level 1. Especially when they're very doable. Once we do finally get to quests, though, the plan will be to focus on quests that give experience for herb lore. Well, first of all, that unlock runecrafting, and then which give experience for herb lore and runecrafting, because they're a pain in the ass to level, uh, and farming, which is also a pain in the ass to level. And then once you tap out all of the quests that give XP to those three skills, we'll kind of just move down the list until we run out of quests, and then when we run out of quests, we'll see which quest still requires stats and find the one that's easiest to train and do that one, and so on. Because I should see how many nails you make with a single recipe. I'm panicking over here thinking that it's like only one nail per bar, but if it's 
easier than that. It looks like I only need 400 iron nails instead of 200 steel nails. I'm going to tag these separately, even though the color's not right, just so I can keep track of it. Let's just go, when we have crafting materials that have the same graphics, we'll start with the crappiest one. We'll just do one, two, three, four, five, and I'll try to remember that that's how I'm using that. I don't think there's that many crafting materials that look identical. Oh, I guess they do look slightly different, don't they? Oh, let's, let's not break our pattern then. Yeah, they're slightly lighter in color. Very good. Woodcutting 27. I think we're going to exceed woodcutting 30 in the time it takes us to get the logs we need for construction and fletching and fire making. That's okay, it's super fast. Look at this mithril axe taking down trees in two hits or less. It's wonderful. Oh, damn. I'm mean, sitting over here panicking about, okay, I gotta get smithing up. This isn't a slowdown getting to the quests for an unacceptable amount. Um, turns out that the, plate, the guy that turns your uh, logs into planks just sells nails. And he's got like a thousand in stock, which is more than we would need. And they're like three gold apiece. So I will just buy the nails rather than freak out about taking like a several hour detour to skill up smithing. Buy the nails. Still want to farm all our own logs though, so it shouldn't be too bad. I really need to check if things are purchasable from a vendor more often. Sometimes makes a difference in hours. Come on, chop down the tree. You can do it. There you go. Something I need to get a handle on with the pathing in this game is I feel like when you tell the game to do something, when you click, it commits to whatever you told it to do during that tick. And if you change orders partway through, it has to obey as much of the first order during that tick as it can. It also seems like if you're going to click on something, just trust your character's going to make it there. If you click again, you might interrupt them and send them on the wrong path, that sort of thing. Axes. I have to stop at 31 because that's when you get the admin axe. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to 31. Let's see if the admin axe is purchasable or maybe it drops from something I can kill. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to worry about the adamant axe. I guess if we focus leveling uh, woodcutting again, if we try to take it beyond 31 on purpose, then I will go, go out of my way to try to find enemies to get it. Woodcutting 28. Fantastic. But as far as just trying to get these logs to uh, level construction, not going to stress about it. It looks like the Mithril Axe might already be at peak efficacy. I don't think you can cut down a tree without swinging at least twice. I suppose it might be a little bit better on the oak tree, but... One hundred and forty-three total planks, so I think this might be our last trip on regular logs, and then I can go do oak logs. I need one more mini trip after this one, I guess we'll see. I didn't actually look in my inventory when I banked them, I just knew it was over on. I need, uh, well, maybe I don't need five more regular logs. How many planks have I picked up in my career so far? You're kidding. Did I sell the ones I got forever ago, way back in episode two when we did the bar crawl? I must have. Potentially womp womp. Yeah, that's that. Oh, okay. Now that, now that I'm clear on how bank organization works and how those tabs work, we really gotta sit down and just organize it. <laughs> I'll find a chance to do it. I have to, I have to do it. I have to record it. I guess that would be the sort of thing where if I was streaming this, I'd be like, I'll do this offline. But I committed to everything being on screen, including the tedious stuff. I guess organizing your bank isn't any more tedious than anything else. It's just uh, doesn't give you any skill XP. <laughs> we'll do it sometime when I'm not tired or something. I was really worried about going over 30 with these logs, but we might actually be okay. We might just barely hit 30. 
and then not have to worry about inefficiently farming for logs with this mithril pickaxe instead of an adamant pickaxe. <laughs> A woodcutting 29. New information from the woodcutting tutor. In okay, we have a total of 238 oak planks. Currently have 109. Basically, like four and a half, five more trips. Maybe we'll just barely hit 31. 31 is when we can use the adamant hatchet, and I'm gonna be. Agonizing if I'm not using the adamant X once we're 31. So the goal, if you're following along at home, is to get the logs before going over level 31. Every swing at the axe after 31 is going to pain me for no reason. It doesn't really matter. It's probably a net savings in like the order of the minutes. But still. I mean, in reality, probably takes more time to go farm whatever drops the adamant axe and just continue using the mithril axe, but I don't care. <laughs> Preparing like that is fun to me. Like, this is gonna make this next step more optimal. It's especially fun when the preparation step is doing something else productive. So in the case of fighting the basilisks and getting slayer up, you know, we need to get slayer up anyway. We need to get magic up anyway. We need to get defense up anyway, so... Nothing of value is lost. There's woodcutting 30, and that's the one we were targeting. You know, we might not actually need, because I think 238 oak planks is to get to level 33 construction. I don't actually care about 33 right now. I would just like 30. I can't tell how many are actually needed. Why don't we do this? I will just, I will just go to 31 woodcutting, because that's when I need to upgrade my axe. We'll stop at 31, um, and then hope we hopefully we have enough logs to do all the stuff we need to do with fletching, construction, and fire making. And if not, we'll we'll farm whatever we need after that. Wood cutting 31. Okay. Can now chop with an adamant axe, so I'm not chopping another lock. <laughs> Alright, uh I think we need to make some runs to the sawmill, which I think is up here. Yeah. Thank God for agility and the graceful set, right? Uh it might actually be relevant to deposit the armor that I'm not using. Like the mirror shield probably keep the ring that's not that big of a deal so I'm actually gonna leave myself some slots because I want to be able to pick up um, these nails and also I think I need a saw from the sawmill oh and I need money God, I almost forgot so frustrating starting to get a little bit thin on cash so I'm gonna have to try to run through the bank and sell all the stuff that we're not gonna use for skilling and then maybe make some swamp toad runs we haven't done that in a good amount of time which I'm better for it. I don't want to do that too often. Sometimes you gotta. Can I talk to him through the window? I can. Wonderful. All right, so I need steel nails. He's got 203 of them by 50. How many nails did it say I needed? 200. I'll just buy all his nails, it's fine. Okay, then I need an ack or a saw. Go ahead and mark that in blue. Now we gotta do a bunch of really boring runs to turn things into planks. Woof. Sawdust matter for some? Oh. Hey, easy task in the Verrock area. All right, uh, enjoy fast forward. I wish I were you. I wish I could fast forward this. Be back in a bit. I feel like this skill has to exist to be a money sink, right? Compared to like the cost of converting uh, cow hides to leather. Over here trying to do math using the experience table and the XP expected from using the oak logs. It looks like I need 
78 oak logs for 30 construction. Uh, that's 19,562 gold to turn them into oak planks. Gross. So I might, well, I might be able to get away with selling stuff on the, the Grand Exchange. I might be able to finish getting 30 construction and uh, fire making and fletching without having to go on a Swamp Toads run. Just by selling some of the extra little bits of things that I found out in leveling up Slayer. Um, so we will try to do that. I would prefer not to make another long trip. But I might deplete my income or deplete, deplete my gold stores just from getting these planks here. I'm already running pretty low just from regular logs. Oh, I might I might just barely be able to afford it. I might go completely broke. And I can go sell so because I think I need a thousand gold. Construction's all about your player made house, right? Which I have to teleport for and haven't been able to use. Uh I think you need a thousand gold to get the house, so I'll probably have to sell some stuff to be able to buy the house. Perfectly calculated, though, apparently. I have exactly enough money <laughs> to get uh, to get the oak logs I need to get to 30 construction. Man, when everyone was saying construction is so expensive, I'm like, oh, that's not going to affect me. I'm all self-found. I'm not going to buy any of these resources. I haven't earned them myself. But no, just like the gold you sink to the sawmill is significant. And I assume it gets worse after 30. I haven't read past training to 30. So I am going to have to go to the Grand Exchange. Uh, I guess I should have grabbed my runes. I could have teleported back. I'm going to have to go to the Grand Exchange and try to sell some junk to get up to a thousand gold so that I can uh, buy my house so I can get started doing this. And we're broke. All right, so that's the plan. Uh, going to fast forward. We're going to the Grand Exchange. We're buying... Well, first we're selling stuff to get like a thousand gold. We're going to track down the real estate agent, who I think is somewhere in Barak. Uh, I will talk again when we talk to the real estate agent, because that'll all be blind for me. And then we'll start getting construction from 1 to 30. It's going to be cool. I think I see where this agent is. Should be east or this way. Talk to a state agent. Welcome, Gillenor Housing Agency. What can I do for you? How can I get a house? Starting house in Remington for a thousand coins. As you increase your construction skill, you'll be able to have your house move to other areas and redecorate it in other styles. Do you want to buy a starter house? Yes, please. Go to the Remington House portal. I got a book there that'll help you make a house. I see your hands are full. Talk to me again when you're in to take it. I might be okay with the training guide I have here. It's no place like home. Whoa, instanced area. Cool. Okay, but I think I need to have an axe and a hammer to do anything in here, right? Hmm. Probably where having that little book from the guy would have been helpful. All right, well, I can get back here quickly, right? So let's go back to Virox, stop at a bank, grab my hammer and my saw, and then port back to the house. At least I can port there quickly. It's not too painful. It's maybe when you're doing planks, you go bank, sawmill, house, bank, sawmill, house, right? One mo again, teleport to the house. Building mode, huh? The access to the options menu, really? Do it in the options menu. That's kind of crazy, but okay. House options. 
building mode on. Ah, build chair space. Crude wooden chair. Okay. That's uh, super interesting. Hey, I just sold 193 leather chaps for one gold apiece. It's interesting. So you build stuff that's in preset spots. Kind of like that. Construction 2. Also, the construction fanfare is amazing. Uh, I'm kind of in love with the way you build stuff in this game. I was worried that it was going to be a lot of customization. Construction 3. The fact that there's just a preset number of things that you can legally build is actually super exciting to me. I might actually want to level construction and build everything just because I think it's interesting. This is what I was talking about earlier about um, smithing. Like, smithing recipes are pretty degenerate. I don't really care about the difference between, you know, an iron dagger and an iron sword. But there might be different uses. There might be value in 100%ing your house. The game doesn't really care if you 100% the smithing recipes. So for now, I'm just going to do whatever is efficient to level me up. I assume it's going to make things faster in the future. I think that's just building chairs and then oak chairs. But We'll go ahead and fast forward. We've, we've seen the shocking first stage, so enjoy my path to 30 construction. Construction 4. Construction 5. Can I build a kitchen? Oh, man. No, I, I actually like this skill. I know people hate it, but I like the way it builds up. That's actually kind of awesome. Construction six. The Camelot Bank is closer, and it's still just one law rune. In fact, I think it's cheaper on runes because I need to spend a rune to go to Varrock. Granted, it's like a couple of coins, but yeah, this might be the way to go. Construction seven. Construction 8. They're coming fast right now. And now I can build a wooden chair. Is that better? Uses 3 planks, 3 nails. Oh yeah, it just gives more XP. Okay, cool. Construction 9. 21 to go. Construction 10. Also, multiple of 10 variant of the fanfare. Okay, I think I'm going to deposit this fire rune because Camelot should be fine. I'm not sure if this is true, but it seems like you have to, um, every single time you teleport to the house, you have to turn on build mode, which is kind of frustrating. Wow. It's so weird that to level a skill, you have to go into the options menu. Instruction 11. But something I'm super into about this game, I've played a lot of games like this that have lots of different things that you can level up and skill up. Obviously, 14 is an example. You can play all the different jobs, you can, uh, you know, level up all the crafters, but the game doesn't really ever give you an incentive to do that. Like, it doesn't care that you got 12 jobs to 50, and maybe it shouldn't, right? As the streamlined MMO, it shouldn't be heavily incentivizing you for grinding that much. But I can see taking something like Final Fantasy XIV and saying, hey, you need to have Dragoon 50 and, you know, Ninja 35 and this job at this level, and then we'll give you a special quest you can do. Don't ever do that, Final Fantasy XIV. You're making a different game from RuneScape. In fact, no modern MMO ever do something like that unless if you're explicitly setting out to make something like RuneScape. <laughs> it's it's so interesting that I like this game so much because it has things that I think are like... the industry would say is bad game design. But it... it uh, let me think if I can use my words here. Construction 12. Stash units. What the hell is a stash unit? I'll look that up here in a second. Um, we, we've talked a lot before while playing MMOs about how MMO design, almost every feature you can possibly add is a double-edged sword. There's almost never such a thing as a strict upside uh, quality of life feature that if you add it, it's going to make the experience in the game better for everyone. Um, all you can do is try to make an upside that's better than the downsides. Even things that are really convenient, like the ability to, to fast travel, kind of take something away from your game. Because when you can fast travel everywhere, you don't really appreciate the, the size and scope of the world. Like, in this game, to get teleports, you have to work your ass off, and then you still have to work, you still have to walk just about everywhere. 
So that, that part feels less bad. But it's stuff like, you know, the, the quests that are practically impossible to sight read that, that somebody worked really hard to figure out when it was launched and then everyone else has used a guide or a wiki for, like... I don't think I could advise any dev to do that on purpose in the future. But the quests feel really cool as a result in a way that a sight readable quest can't possibly feel, you know? Anyway, back to construction. Construction 13. Just bolting through these levels. I feel like this is another skill that becomes real around level 30 when you suddenly have enough choices. At 30, I might just want to try to build all the slots, you know? Stop using an XP guide. I need to double check what level of construction we need at the end. It would help me to make an informed decision. I should just commit this to memory, the soft caps for every skill. Oh, I bet I could write it in the... There's a little notepad option in here, isn't there? Yeah. Let me write that in here. And I can just see it in game. Okay, so 40 attack, 50 hit points, 72 mining, 50 strength. I think star means it's boostable. 70 agility. I thought it was 68. Let me type the rest of them. Here, I'll mute you. Don't hear me click. Whoa, something's not right. There's a lot of values here that are higher than when I first did research. Like, farming is 70? I thought it was like 50. That looks like 70 construction. Okay, that also doesn't sound right. Um, I'll keep researching that on the side here. I actually need to step away AFK for just a quick second to check on something. I'll be right back. Level 14 construction, though I'm really AFK for just a minute or two. We'll fast forward. Alright, I'm back. Let's keep going. Why wouldn't I make the rocking chair? Is it the exact same XP or something? I think it is the same XP. Maybe it's just a stylistic choice at that point. Yeah, it's 80 70 either way. Maybe it just gives you XP per plank or something. I'll just do the most recent one, just cuz. Construction 15. 15 more levels and we are done. I can now build a house four rooms wide and long. I can now build a workshop. Cool. Put an oak tree outside? That's funny. Construction 16. Three more until we get uh, oak chairs. Construction 17. Two more levels. A little bit nervous. I'm hoping those uh, 34 nails last us because I don't want to make another trip to the sawmill. Construction 18. 13 nails need to carry us to 19. I'm a little bit stressed. That might not cut it. I might need to go buy some more. Oh boy. Don't think we need nails after finishing this. Oh, I need planks. Okay. Just looking if there's a way to put building mode on default. I guess there is if you go in through the normal portal into the house. But if you teleport there, you have to manually turn it on, which is kind of frustrating. I'm glad we got teleport to house, right? Level 40 magic? Imagine how annoying this would be if we didn't have that. Okay, worst case, I actually still have some bronze nails from way back in the day. Let me just, well, let's see. I'm probably gonna have to go grab those, but. I don't have enough nails left, so I just waste the nails. Big oof. Let's just grab the ones I have that are bronze. Hopefully that's enough. I think we only need to like make three more chairs. I think I have something like 60 nails. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna be very sad. Maybe it'll remember that I wasted nails and give me credit when I start it again. Oh, the nails. Big difference in the success rate with bronze nails. Although now, the choice to make bronze nails in that first 8 hour stream session is paying off. Usually the fact that I'm muted protects us from getting phone calls while 
I'm talking, but it happens. Robocaller, dismiss it. Come on, it's the last one. Yeah. Whew. Instruction 19. Oak chair, cat basket. Thank God, I was really worried about that. All right, so we're gonna go grab our oak logs, which I think, if I calculated the XP correctly, should take us to, uh, I can grab that black full helm, right? Hi, Alcott. Free money. We should be able to get to 30 if I calculated logs correctly, is what I'm trying to say. Let's see whether I did. Don't need nails anymore, don't need money anymore. Don't need regular planks anymore. Give me them oak planks and we will pray that that's enough. Probably should have grabbed the black son of a bitch. Here goes, uh, oak chair. Do we have enough logs to get to 30? Let's find out. 20 construction, 10 levels to go. May have miscalculated in terms of number of oak logs. Uh, but now we have more money, so I might still have enough money to make enough to finish hitting 30, we'll see. Construction 21. Construction 22. Construction 23. This is actually much faster than it was before because you can't bend nails anymore. Seven to go. Yeah, you know, Camelot might be my better teleport anyway. It's just so easy to get to the bank. I basically run in a straight line. All right, I could say with close to certainty, I don't have enough logs to hit 30 or enough planks. So we'll have to make a couple more plank runs, but I think it's manageable. Instruction 24, six to go. 25 multiples of five, everyone's favorite. I'll build a hall for skill trophies, huh? Crafting table, tool store, oak clock. Since I said I'm enjoying this skill, I'm actually kind of interested in like what all I can put in my house. If I can get like, you know, a spinning wheel and an anvil and a forge, all that cool stuff, it would be super awesome to have one place to do all of this. So it's, it's really stupid that I'm super interested in construction of all skills, but this might be one of my favorite takes on player housing I've seen. I like that they kind of make you earn it make it a skill that is necessary for quests, so it's not just about building the house. Yeah. Marshad's two favorite skills, Slayer and Construction. I guess I'll grab the old ones and I don't need them for anything else. I may as well just build with them, right? Grab the nails if I can find them. Really gotta clean up my inventory. Man, dear viewer, if you've made it this far without losing your brain from my bank organization, 90 hours in and I'm only just now thinking about organizing my bank. I salute you. At least now I also know how bad I am for not noticing the tabs along the top of the window there. It'll look so much nicer once I clean it up. Instruction 26. Okay. Well, now I'm curious. Oak armchair requires three oak planks. I wonder if it's the same deal where it's just faster now. Probably. 
All right, uh, we're gonna go to Verok. Gonna make at least one full inventory of oak planks. Maybe two. No, I think I'm gonna do it one at a time. I don't wanna overspend on oak planks and use up all my money if I can help it. I don't need to, you know. Money, almost forgot money. So bad, so bad about that. It's shameful. <sighs> trying to think what I want to do. Yeah, this is fine. Because I could uh, bring, I could deposit the tools and the runes, and then run back. But I think this might be better. I run there and then I teleport and then I teleport and then I run and then I teleport and I teleport. And overall, faster I think. Construction 27, three more. Hey, more stash units. Okay, I need to look that up before we wrap today's session and understand what that is exactly. No, I was forgetting something. Really, is it just runes? I still think I'm going to be short. I'm going to have to do some Swamp Toads. I'm going to get to like 29, I think. <laughs> it hurts. Ah, uh, well. Construction 28. I'll build a suit of armor. We're so close to having enough. Oh, I need all my money. I need all my fucking money, man. All right. I guess I'll go back to Verok. See if maybe I can uh, scrounge together a little bit more money without having to go swamp toad farming. We will do that. We, we're going to have to for like runes and stuff in the future. But... Man, this, because if you do Iron Man, uh, which I was thinking about doing, like, I don't think I would ever want to do Ultimate Iron Man. Not having a bank is would not be fun for me. But I would like to have the Temptation removed to use the Grand Exchange. But I feel like getting coins has got to be extremely difficult. Because you can only really get money by selling to NPCs, right? And they don't sell for shit, for the most part. All right, let me look long and hard at what I could sell, what I know for a fact I have no interest in continuing to use. I don't really, I found all these potions on the ground, I didn't really earn them. Oh, let me do it noted, and that's the smart way to do this. Notes. I don't even know if they're worth any money, but I guess we'll find out. I don't need the Mithril Pickaxe anymore. Why do I have five Mithril Pickaxes? Okay, don't question it, it's fine. I do want the Rune and Adamant Pickaxes though. No longer need the Mithril Full Helm. Oh, you know, I'm so used to MMOs having a system whereby once you equip gear, it's bound to you and you can't just resell it. So it's interesting that you can like buy something, use it, and then sell it back, right? Hey, new random event. Freaky Forester. Can you help me with some pheasants? Have you seen this one? Maybe I skipped it. Oh no, I remember this one now. Three Tails. Give me the raw pheasants. Sounds good.
I'm glad they warn you. Alright, Lederhosen? Yeah. Ultimate cosplay. So now I have two pieces of the German outfit. Very cool. No, do not put that in that tab. No, do not do that either. Put it in here. Okay. Uh, I need to grab another oak log. There we go. Twenty-nine. Hopefully I have enough to get to 30. If I'm one short of 30, I'm going to be so sad. I have some still in my bank, so this isn't all I have. Ninety-seven percent, and I have exactly three planks left. Unbelievable, and I'm completely broke. Construction thirty. Let's not touch that for a while, but let's definitely come back to it eventually because I, I'm intrigued. I'd like to make a big house with all of the different objects, especially if they all have uses. Especially since I can port here easily. Made the house five rooms long, and I can build a games room. Bed, hoop and stick, willow tree, small storage unit. Ooh, storage unit. Because that's maybe separate from a bank? I wouldn't mind having some, like, basic necessities that I can quickly grab from a teleport to house spell. Okay. Let's look at this skill menu in Marvel. Look at that. 30, 30. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. So we're missing herb lore, which we're going to wait for questing to progress, or just do it as we get drops. Fire making, which I should be able to finish pretty easily. I might even be able to just burn all my oak logs and see where that takes me, the ones I have left over. Uh, fletching, which should be pretty easy. Rune crafting, which we need to do a quest for, so we're not going to touch that until questing begins. And farming, which we need a quest for, so we're not going to touch that until questing begins. So questing is beginning soon. Basically, after fire making and fletching, I'm out of excuses to put it off. Yeah, I think that's true. Well, cool. Uh, well, I probably need to cut down more trees then to make to do both fletching and. Uh, fire making, but we'll go ahead and get fire making out of the way. Let me teleport here. I should see if this house teleport, if like the town it takes me to is particularly convenient, you know? It might be. There's some oaks right outside this building. Plus side, I don't think I ever need regular logs again, which is good because they're the most frustrating to, to gather. I only have 10 oak logs. Let me see if, how quickly a fire making level goes by though. So I'm going to grab the logs. I'm going to grab my tinder box. Which I'm going to move to my tools menu. We haven't touched fire making since the very first streamed episode. Uh, and I had a ball with it and got it to like 20, I think. Fire making 21. So technically this is the apocalypse scenario where I'm using a mithril axe instead of an adamant axe. Past 31 would be gutting, but I'm just gonna deal with it. I wanna get everything to 30. Getting getting the mithril axe has bet this up quite a bit over the steel axe, so I can't imagine that the adamant axe is that much of an improvement. 
I just be able to stick to these two trees right here. That's fantastic. I stand like over here and get between both nodes. Hell yeah, okay. Twenty-two fire making, eight to go. Fire making twenty-three. Wood cutting thirty-two. Not with an adamant axe. It's okay. I'll only cry a little bit. Fire making 24. Fire making 25, a multiple of 5. 5 more to go and we're done. Fire making 26, almost. Fire making 26. Wood cutting 33 with the wrong level of axe. Ah. Fire making 28, we're almost there, so I can snatch these guys' logs if he doesn't want them. Speed up my fire making a bit. Twenty-nine, just one more. Fire making is easy peasy. Grabbing that guy's logs that aren't enough to spend more time skilling woodcutting without the proper items, right? Thirty fire making and perfect timing, because now is when I have to stop playing. Gotta prep for the live stream. It's uh, willow logs are now available, so we just need fletching. Literally, just need fletching. That's it. Once we get fletching to thirty, then it's questing time. I promise. I swear. No, I cannot get further uh, distracted. So, restating, fletching to 30, all quests associated with herb lore XP, rune mysteries and all quests associated with runecraft XP, all quests associated with farming XP, all quests down the line in some arbitrary order. See you when we come back in a few seconds. Hey, real quick, before the next thing that I'm going to do, I need to... Uh, go ahead and organize my bank and I'm currently in a situation where I can't talk too much so I'm just gonna start working on organizing the bank and record it uh, and then we'll fast forward through it and then we'll start with whatever my next thing is and I sit down and play this for longer enjoy Yo, so I didn't get a chance to explain what I did with uh, banking last night. My wife was watching TV in the living room where my stream office is, and uh, I was like, I can knock out some banking right now, because I don't need to talk while I'm doing the whole thing. To just kind of summarize my choices here, I recognize I'm limited to my tabs, and I'm probably going to change what these tabs are later. Uh, but I made runes and currencies and teleports. Uh, so this stuff, the gear I'm currently using, food and other consumables like potions, tools, which it turns out there's quite a few, 
Raw materials, I might need to figure out how I'm going to separate raw materials because I've decided to make a separate tab for general raw materials and like herbal or farming raw materials. Uh, if I had more tabs, I would certainly use them. Key items are stuff related to quests or stuff related to like Slayer gear, like the Slayer gloves, the Witchwood Icon, the Insulated Boots, uh, the Talismans, which I think you need for rune crafting, but I guess we'll figure that out for sure. Junk gear gear that I'm not actively using, maybe I could use it to craft or sell, and then just general junk, stuff that I don't know the purpose of, it's vendor trash, that sort of thing. Uh, so this is going to make it a lot easier for me to look through my inventory. At some point I might go through all of these items and pull them into my actual bag so that I can put a, a color tag on them, because uh, tagging items has been really helpful for me to tell the difference between items in my inventory, it's the OS Buddy feature. I wish I could have as many tags as I have bank tabs, but what are you going to do? Alright, so the current task is fletching 30. That's the last thing we have to do. That's going to require some more uh, wood cutting in order to make the arrow shafts. I guess I could look in to see if there's something better for me to do than, uh, than making arrow shafts. Like Maybe I've got something that's more productive. But I do have 3,500 arrow tips that I can burn through that will probably get me to uh, 30 fletching. So why don't we just grab our axe, pop outside, get a bunch of oak logs, fletch them, and see what the situation is. We'll be back in a bit. Per swing success rate on oak trees is just bad enough that I feel the pain of not having the adamant axe, but I'll, I'll survive. Fletching, 21, 9 to go. Wood cutting, 34, every painful level. Hey, we got another bird nest. I really need to figure out what the deal is with these things. Uh, hold on. Search bird nest. Okay, hold on. I guess it's just a chance for something cool to happen while you're logging, sort of like how you can get gems from mining. There is a willow seed in the bird's nest. And then the bird's nest is still worth a decent amount of money even after opening it like that, right on. I'll keep that in mind. I wonder what its purpose is later on. Damn, another bird nest. Super exciting. Search. Another willow seed. Okay. Cool. It's kind of a fun thing to look forward to while woodcutting. Ah, woodcutting 35. We're just going to make it to whatever the next axe is, right? Now cut down dense jungle and teak trees. Oh, when can I do teak with fletching? Arrow shafts, oak logs, arrow shafts, willow logs at 30. Okay, so too long from now. Oak is still where it's at. Fletching 22, I might go switch to 
I should look what it takes to make darts. I think I need to make dart tips. I don't think I can get away with using my arrow tips for it, but they seem convenient. Alright, time to make these into arrows. Let's see what I can do. 1968 feathers. I might burn through all my feathers to decide how I'm going to go about farming crew feathers later if there's another enemy other than regular chickens that drop them, you know? Clutching 23. Okay, I'm just making sure I cannot make steel arrows until 30, so I'm not do anything wrong by not doing it now, you know. Fletching 24. Fletching 25. Five more to go. So close. Hey, Fletching 26. Jade tipped blurite bolts, that's very specific. Fletching 27. Oak shields. Fletching 28, wow, so like, XP rate is significantly higher for making the arrows than for making the shafts or attaching the feathers to the shafts. Fletching 29. We'll see if we have enough uh, shafts here to hit 30. I hope so. Ah, I'm so close. Alright, I guess I need to get some more logs to finish off 30, so I'll about to do that really quick. Uh, let me deposit all this junk, though, in the meantime. Make sure that these are all actually finished. Call this junk, even though it's valuable junk. All right, let's do a little bit more wood cutting. Hopefully, it's like one or two more steps. Oh, I gotta, I gotta change worlds. Dude's got my spot. Super rude. Wood cutting thirty six. We're really gonna... Okay, it's fine. <laughs> so I'm nervous about being out of feathers for when we want to train more fletching or fishing later. Uh, so I'm looking up where can I get feathers from other than just chickens since they're kind of not worth my time to skill on. And I guess shops just sell them. I should always be looking to see if something is sold by shops because it changes everything. Uh, I don't think there's any shops that are particularly easy for me to get to. I guess there's one in Shante Pass that's pretty close to Lumbridge. I can go hit that one up. I don't need them now though, I don't think. I think I'd get it just by making arrow shafts out of these logs, but I'll keep that in mind for when we come back to these skills in the future. Hey, Fletching 30. I'm going to finish Fletching the logs that we have. Steel, steel arrows. Fantastic. Let's look at those skill lists, though, right? It's going to look real nice. Ooh. Oh. 
There's three holes, but at least the three holes form a triangle, right? Got rune crafting, farming, and herb lore. But everything else is at least a 30. Golly, it feels good. Um, all right, so short term goal. Let's go do. Let's do rune mysteries. I think that's the quest that unlocks rune crafting. Uh, and then we'll see how rune mysteries plays out. If rune crafting to 30 seems feasible, like if I could sit down and grind it out like how we did with construction, I was expecting to have to quest for construction, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. If rune crafting is also not that bad, then I'll go ahead and knock out rune crafting 30 after doing rune mysteries. If it does seem that bad, then we'll do the, the original plan, which is do every quest that awards XP to rune crafting, herb lore, and farming. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly look up where to start this rune mysteries quest and uh, be back in a bit. It looks like it's in Lumbridge Castle, so I'm gonna deposit my crap, get my teleporting gear together, and we'll go and pick up the quest and I'll start talking again. Remember somebody named Duke Horatio? He goes on the second floor. Crafting tutor, Sigmund, Duke Horatio. Greetings, welcome to my castle. Have you any quests for me? Well, not really a quest, but I recently discovered the strange talisman. It seems to be mystical and I've never seen anything like it before. Would you take it to the head wizard at the wizard's tower for me? It's just southwest of here and should not take you very long at all. I would be awfully grateful. Sure, no problem. I'm sure the head wizard will reward you for such an interesting find. Oh, air talisman, okay, yeah. So I had heard that these talismans were related to rune crafting. I think maybe during the live stream, I don't remember why I know that. Go ahead and bring this to the wizard. Interesting that I can attack the wizards here. This guy maybe? Trailborn? Or named NPCs? Hello there, can I help you? Hello, young thing me what? Okay. Teach me to be a mighty and powerful wizard. Wizard, eh? You don't any truck with that sort, they're not to be trusted. Aren't you a wizard? How dare you, of course I'm a wizard. Don't be so cheeky, I'll turn you into a frog. <laughs> oh, I really like this game. Up. This guy, maybe? Wizard Mizgog? What are you doing finding my beads? Oh yeah, I forgot about this guy's quest. From the Implings, right? Wizard Grazag. Four imps out of a thousand. Oh, you can safe spot this thing? That's funny. Just come up here and go to the gate and just shoot the demon over and over? Maybe they're in the basement, this thing I'm looking for. Oh wow, I didn't realize there's all this stuff down here. Let's see. Cedridor, maybe? Yo. How may I help you? Looking for the head wizard. Why would you be doing that? The Duke of Lumberd sent me to find him. I have this weird talisman he found. He said the head wizard would be very interested in it. Did he now? Hmm. That is interesting. Hand it over, then, adventurer. Just some amulet, I'll wager. Okay, here you are. Hand the talisman to the wizard. This is incredible. The talisman you brought me is the last piece of the puzzle. Finally, the legacy of our ancestors will return to us once more. I need time to study this. Can you please do me this task while I study the talisman? In the mighty town of Virak, located northeast of here, there is a certain shop that sells magical runes. I have in this package all of the research I've done relating to the runestones, 
I just wanted to take him to the shopkeeper so he may share my research. She went to the knowledge that this is one of the greatest secrets the world has ever known. A secret so powerful it destroyed the original wizard's tower centuries ago. Oh. And realize that, like, these runes we've been using have been, like, discovered. Cannot believe the answer to the mysteries is so close. Appear rewarded in ways you can never imagine. With with the skill that's the most hated in the game, right? Head directly north from here, to Trainer Village, and east there's leaving to Barak. Okay, I know where the root shop is. Gotcha. Yo, Aubrey. Got a package for you. Here is the package from the head wizard at the wizard's tower. Must be extremely important for him to have sent a stranger. Give me a few moments to look over this and then talk to me again. Okay. Gratitude to you for bringing this to me. Combined with the information I'd already co uh, collated regarding the rune essence, I think we finally unlocked the power to... No, I'm getting ahead of myself. Please take this summary of my research back to the head wizard of the wizard's tower. Okay, so I think we're going to go to Lumbridge, right? Sneaking out the back again. Look at all this run energy that we have. I think I made it all the way to the wizard's tower without running out. Oh wait. Okay, I think I know what I'm doing now. This quest is pretty uh pretty able to be done blind, right? I have the the walkthrough pulled up on the wiki with the uh requirements and where to talk to the first NPC, but haven't had to scroll it down. It's wonderful. Welcome, adventurer. How goes your quest? Have you delivered the research notes to my friend Aubrey yet? I have. He gave me some research notes to pass on to you. I have his notes. Sure, I have them here. I I was able to read them. Before you hand them over to me, as you've been nothing but truthful with me to this point, and I admire that an adventurer, I will let you into the secret of our research. You may not know, many centuries ago, the wizards of this tower learned the secret of creating rune stones, which allowed us to cast magic easily. When this tower was burnt down, the secret of creating runes was lost to us for all time, except it wasn't. Some months ago, while searching the ruins for information from the old days, I came upon a scroll almost destroyed that detailed the magical rock deep in the ice fields of the north. Closed off from access by anything other than magical means. Oh, that's cool. I love the quest text in this game. This rock was called the Rune Essence by the magicians who studied its powers. By simply breaking a chunk from it, a rune stone could be fashioned very quickly and easily at certain elemental altars that were scattered across the land back then. Now, this is an interesting little piece of history, but not much use to us as modern wizards without access to Rune Essence. This is where you and Aubrey come into the story. A few weeks back, Aubrey discovered in a standard delivery of runes to his door a parchment detailing a teleportation spell he'd never come across before. Cool. To his shock, when cast, it took him to a strange rock he'd never encountered before. It felt strangely familiar. I'm sure you've now guessed he discovered a portal leading to the mythical rune essence. As soon as he told me of the spell, I saw the importance of his find. Or if we could but find the elemental altar spoken of in the ancient texts, we would once more be able to create runes that our ancestors had done, and would be the savior of the wizard's art. So I'm not sure how I fit into this story of yours. This talisman brought you me. Oh, this talisman you brought me is the key to the elemental altar of air. When you hold it next, it will direct you towards the entrance of the long forgotten air altar. By bringing pieces of the rune essence to the air temple, you'll be able to fashion your own air runes. That's not all, by finding the other talisman similar to this one, you'll soon be able to craft every rune available, just like our ancestors did. Keep the teleport skill of the rune essence a closely guarded secret, sure, only by myself and those magic users around the world whom I trust enough to keep it. it. Means if any evil power should discover the talisman required to enter the elemental temples, we'll be able to prevent their access to the rune essence, prevent tragedy befalling the world. <laughs> I don't know where the temples are, nor do I know where the talismans have been scattered to. 
and now return your air talisman to you. Find the air temple and you'll be able to charge your rune essences become air runes at will. Anytime you wish to visit the rune essence, speak to me, Aubrey, and we'll open a portal to that mystical place for you to visit. That's cool. Others who know the teleport whom will tell you of, tell of your authorization to visit that place. When you speak to them, they'll know you and grant you access when asked. Use the air talisman to locate the air temple. Use any further talisman needs to be find to locate the other missing elemental temples. Here's your research notes. Hey! Quest complete, Rune Mysteries. Quest point, Rune Crafting Skill, Air Talisman. Radical. Okay, well let's go to this place. I don't know how I gather runes. Hello there. You teleport me to the Rune Essence. Complete an easy task in Lumbridge. Cool. Whoa! Mine Rune Essence. Oh, I need a pickaxe? I guess that makes sense. That's cool. Huh, so it's like a... It's another thing to do with mining that doesn't contribute just to smithing. Okay, I'll go grab my pickaxe. I'll dump my inventory. We'll talk to Aubrey. Um, so, I still feel kind of guilty. Way back in the day, I bought 50 Pure Essence in order to do the Priest in Peril quest because I just had no idea what was going to be required to to get it. So if I'm able to get Pure Essence here, um, I think I'll farm 50 of them and then just go sell them on the Grand Exchange to pay myself back for my old purchase. I still technically need to track down the merchants that sell this mithril gear and do the same thing, buy a piece of each of it. I found my own Adamant Full Helm, so I've already sold the... I think I sold that the mithril full helm tonight. Yeah. So I need to find mithril equivalents of all of this um, and then list it. But that's low priority. It's something I need to get to eventually. I don't want to skip that content. I think I can just do the pickaxe. Probably should leave behind... Anything that I don't need to teleport back. Okay. I've got the adamant pickaxe equipped, right? I do. Sweet. Let's go uh, rind some, rind some moon essence. Mine some rune essence. Talk to Aubrey over here. I wonder if mining it gives me mining XP or if it gives me rune crafting XP. Yo, dog. Build inconspicuous crate. I need to figure out what that... Oh, uh, that must be the stash thing. I need to figure out how that works. Can you teleport me to the rune essence? Okay, so it looks like it's pretty easy to get teleported there when you need it. Mine rune essence. Pure essence. Okay, so it's cheesy, but I'm going to get uh, 50 of these. Which I think is two trips, because I've got three slots reserved for teleport spells. And I'm going to go sell them on the Grand Exchange to pay back my debt to past Marston. Uh, and then I'll come back and we'll get a few stacks of them and see what we're going to use them for. If I can use this uh, Air Talisman. Cool. Completed an easy task in the Varrock area. Alright, so that's 25. 25 more. Uh, it says I've got 40 rune essence. I must have gotten some from like an enemy drop or something a while ago without realizing it. So, because I only need to get 10 more to repay my priest in peril debt, and then I'll keep the rest of whatever I mine. Buy some rune. It's all I need the rune essence. Looks like I am getting mining XP, not rune crafting XP for mining this thing. It's really interesting that they have this one monolithic mining point. Let's explore the rest of this area and see if there's any trick to it. 5 XP per mine. Oof. 239 actions left to level up. Alright, 
Alright, I'm gonna explore this area real quick just to see if there's anything else of interest. And if not, we'll keep moving here. There's lots of different Runescence options. As far as I can tell, they're all the same thing. Oh, hey! I get this random event a lot for some reason. Don't give me a gold ring, that's your worst reward. I love how raw materials are by far the most expensive because people get more value out of like the XP from raw materials. Hundred and twenty five gold. Uh I will take the runescence actually. Like hundred and twenty five gold is worth more than one runescence, but the hassle is higher value. I think there's just a bunch of different places that you're able to mine. Just in case this place was crowded or something. Oh, I can warp right back. That's not far from the bank. Alright. Then I don't have to cast teleport, and then I can probably deposit all my other shit. Let's do that. I think I'm going to do a couple trips here with uh, stacking up on pure essence, and then I'll stop at the Grand Exchange, sell exactly 50 of them to pay myself back. And I'll see if I can do this air talisman thing. I just I just want to see like how awful this is to level. If it's not so bad, if it's like construction, then we can go ahead and take it to 30 before we start doing quests for it. Alright, we're full. Let's do a few more runs of this and then see what's next. I might have to think about this pure essence stuff. I mean, this sells for like two gold a piece on the market board or the Grand Exchange. Gives basically no mining XP. And as far as I know, you use these same blank essences the whole time, right? Like you don't, you never get to a new level of rune essence. I really, I, I said I really don't want to buy uh, materials off the market board, but I'm just not sure that this this process of mining the pure essence is compelling. <laughs> it's not even really generating savings either. Like it probably is costing me money in the time I'm spending to do it. I could be doing something way more effective. But see, that's that's the problem of even ac having access to trading in the first place. Is I can do that that math and say how many pure essences can I buy in the time it would take me to fill my inventory with swamp toads. Is it fair to do Swamp Toads instead of Pure Essence? This is going to be a hard decision. I, I might have to break my philosophy for this one. Hey, so quick quick commentary from the distant future. I think I mentioned this in the previous episode, but you're about to see my resolve crack a little bit with seeing just how miserable RuneCraft is. Um, I do go to the market board and buy Pure Essence because I'm like, this is awful and I don't want to do this but I eventually walk back that decision. So don't panic when you see the whole Tin Man theory falling apart. Uh, within an episode or so, I end up paying all that pure essence back. And like I said before, we are committing to always paying back everything we ever buy. But you can just see how psychologically damaging the first seven levels of RuneCraft are. Imagine how much worse it gets when you're getting close to the quest cape, which is where I am. So thanks. Uh, it's going to be fine. I just don't see anything interesting about this, but... I won't make the decision now. Uh, I think I'll get to RuneCraft 30 self-bought. I'll get my own essences, and then we'll uh, we'll try to make a decision for RuneCraft leveling post 30. Double check which talismans I need. I guess to help with answering this question, I can probably see how much how many how many pure essences do I need to get to 30. That'll help me get a sense of how many essences I'm going to need, like, overall. So I know we have to start with air runes, I said that. How many talismans do I have? I want those under tools. Got body talisman, shitloads of air talismans, chaos talisman that I can't use yet. 
then the skill guide says... Mine runes at 2, water runes at 5, mist runes at 6, earth runes at 9, dust runes, fire runes, smoke, body. Body is 20, so I can take the 21 up potentially once we hit it. Mm. Alright, I'm gonna go grab one more stack of pure essence so we can see what training the skill is like. I'll be honest, I'm a little nervous. And then I'll, uh, while I'm doing this next stack of 28 Renaissance, I'll quickly look up how many I'm expected to need for until I tap out air runes. Okay, so this thing says you need 194 pure essence to go from level 1 to level 9. That is insane. Okay, I need to compare it to smithing. Maybe it's not insane and I'm being unfair. Smithing. How many how many ore did I need to go from 1 to 9? 15. Oh, it doesn't tell you, but it, I feel like it was less than that. That's insane. Well, <laughs> I don't know, my, my resolve is cracking already. I said get to 30 of my own essences, but it's basically this little trip between the bank and him. And then it, I don't even think that like the pickaxe you have or your mining skill has any effect on how quickly you get that essence. It just seems like it pulls out at a fixed rate. Like, this is the definition of a commodity, right? This is where the... <laughs> we were in the US government, there'd be subsidies in order to put a price floor on pure essences. Good lord. Okay, I guess I already have 149. I need to sell 50 of those to pay off my past self. I'm gonna go do that. Let me grab the air talisman real quick. Pause it. I'm going to try to bring all of this with me if I can until I figure out where I can teleport to. Because I think I've got, yeah, my Lumbridge teleport will be back, so I can always pop that afterward. Use Air Talisman. Locate Air Talisman. Southwest, okay. Well, let's go sell this first and then we'll, we'll follow the Talisman. Alright, my debt has been repaid. I have sold 50 pure essences back to the market board that I earned myself. In retrospect, I totally could have earned that myself during Priest in Peril. I didn't realize that the rune crafting, crafting unlock quest was so trivial and simple. Because I think people in chat like scared me away from it. They said, oh, it's uh, based on some RNG or something. Maybe you used to have to get the air talisman as a drop in order to start it or something. But they didn't just give it to you. I don't know. Tronos item, Tronos item. All right, let's uh, follow this talisman to where we're going. And I'm gonna have to look at the skill guide. Uh, finding the other talismans, I think they're all just drops from monsters, right? So I'll probably just end up looking up each talisman and find a monster that I can kill that drops it and then farm it. I think that's reasonable. I guess I'll put it this way. I'm more interested in uh, farming the talismans because that's interesting, unique content that's going to take us all over the game world to different NPCs that drop them than I am farming the Pure Essences, which is in a like sterile map that I can freely warp to. That's a short walk away from the bank. I kind of wish we had rolled Iron Man and I didn't even have the pole in the first place. I don't know. Cast Factor's probably still right that if we die or something and lose a bunch of gear that it will be empowering to just treat the grand exchange access as a safe point and if i say hey if i've earned this in the past legitimately it's okay for me to buy it now on the market board but it's it's hard for me to really like feel the wisdom of that in my bones until uh i actually die and lose stuff so 
For now, I'm still plagued with regret about not being Iron Man. I guess the the biggest benefit is that like we got to experience more of the game in the opening hours. Like I was able to get that Camelot teleport and do the agility course early on. And that may have been critical to what hooked me. If I had started with the inability to, to trade, it may have taken a lot longer for me to get the stuff. It may have been less interesting to watch. I may have spent more time on certain tasks. I don't know. Northwest, I must be close to it now. Holds to the northwest. Is it this thing over here, maybe? Oh, this, this is Falador. Organize those walls anywhere. Salmon Mysterious Ruins. Powerful presence about these ruins. Can I use the Air Talisman on it? Oh, very cool. Okay. Craft Rune Altar. Oh wow, you just craft all the ones in your inventory. Level 2. Well, I mean, that's convenient that I don't have to sit there and do it one at a time. So, this just becomes a bank run every time? Run from wherever the nearest bank is to the altar? Repeat ad nauseum? Okay, I guess there's... Ah, uh, but I don't... This is where, if I had unlocked the crafting guild, but I think that's like 60 crafting or something absurd, so... Damn, this is a hell of a walk. So if I had teleports with me, I could teleport to Falador and make it a little bit faster, but... Oof. Do I have a shortcut into Falador? Not one that gets me closer to a bank. Okay. Alright, well, I will turn all of my current pure essence into air runes and see what level that puts me at. But yeah, the, if I just used a full stack of pure essence and went from level 1 to halfway through level 2, that's, that's kind of scary. I will say, though, that this is much more doable than I was thinking it was going to be. It might just be a pain in the ass, but it's a doable pain in the ass. Like, if I'm willing to get 68 agility, I should be able to hit 30 rune crafting without getting a, a single bit of quest XP to bump us really high, so... I guess this begs the question, or raises the question, that... Should I do this for farming as well? Ooh. I think I'm, I'm pretty res resolute. Er... There we go. Your essences. I think I'm correct to not want to do herb lore manually all the way to 30, simply because being a higher level level herb lore lets me clean more herbs, which gets me XP, and lets me make more potions, which gets me XP. Why is that different for herb lore than like mining? I think it's because with mining I can say I'm level 1, the only thing I can make is, you know, copper, so I'm gonna go get copper and tin. But I can't do that with herb lore, it's random drops from a pretty wild, wide level range of like 1 to 30. So since I can't target something specifically, it's probably better for me to do it this way. Thank goodness for the graceful outfit and 68 agility though, it's making this walk way more tolerable. Uh, speaking of 68 agility, I remember we discovered a couple sessions ago that uh, you apparently need 70 agility now for the quest they just released this last patch in July. Hey, Runecraft 3. Oof, yeah, this is, this is gonna be slow. Um, you need 70 agility, so I'm not actually done with agility, I still need to do at least two more levels. Um, maybe I'll try the Werewolf Agility course again now that I found out about that OpenGL bug where you have to click on a specific pixel. Maybe it'll be faster if I can just spam click stuff instead of having to like hover over the exact pixel. But uh, 
I'm never gonna just flat grind that out back to back. It would be a one level or even like one hour per session thing like we were doing earlier. And we've done enough agility for now. We, I'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I don't need it today. Okay, so... How resolved am I to mine my own pure essence? Let me... I'm gonna read a little bit further ahead in the wiki than I normally would just to see exactly how many essence I need from level 1 to 30. And then I'll figure out how much time it would cost to... Like, I'll, I'll time a, um, a lap of mining one group of it and then see what we see. Green crafting 5. Now craft water runes. I think I want to collect all the talismans. I think that would be fun. I was mentioning earlier about how there's certain uh, there are certain skills in this game where I want to do one of everything that the skill can do. So like thievery, I want to steal from one of everything at least. Go on a go on a tour, check all the stalls and um, cut your chest and that sort of a thing. I think getting all of the talismans and visiting and crafting runes at all of the altars would be a fun challenge. Long term, not something we have to do right now. Because given how annoying the pure essence is, it seems like it's especially true that uh, you should stick to whatever the most XP efficient run is for making early runes. Especially since these early elemental runes sell for like nothing, right? I guess once we start being able to make our own chaos runes, that would be exciting, actually. I'm actually curious if anything goes into it beyond just the pure essence, because chaos runes are super expensive. I have to farm a lot to be able to use them. I need them all the time. But the elemental runes, like I, I don't need one or the other. They all cost the same, and they're trivial for me to obtain. You need a tiara to bind to your talisman? What? Almost level six. Good lord. Who golly. Alright, uh, as I run back to the bank, I'm gonna do this calculation real quick and then make a decision on whether I'm okay with buying or not. God, I need 968 runes, root pure essences, to go from 1 to 23. I don't even have data on 1 to 30. So that's. 34 mining trips. Okay. Uh, I think I'm gonna... I, I, I'm okay with just buying it. You know? Um, I know I just sold some to make up for the ones I bought earlier, but I, now I regret buying them earlier even less. <laughs> this is... This is pretty miserable. Uh, I just don't understand why they... They require you to make so many to level up. Maybe it's just like later when you can make the more expensive runes, like nature runes and law runes, that like they don't want there to be too much of a influx, so they want to limit the number of players that are high enough level to get those things. I don't know. Well, we're gonna go to the Grand Exchange. I will shamefully purchase, not so shamefully purchase, a bunch of these. Here comes the evil philosophy violation. I feel like the interesting part of this uh, skill is not mining the pure essence, which is like, it's almost lazy that that's the only way. It's the one re resource you use all the way up to 99, I assume, right? Uh, Anyway, the interesting part about this isn't getting the essence, it's uh, getting talismans. So we are gonna, I'm gonna go through and try to get every talisman. Uh, and it's getting, finding the altars, which is fun. And then I guess making the trips back and forth between the altars is like putting in the work, right? Cause that'll change as we, as we use different runes. I buy them for one coin. It's like two coins per essence, like, oh my god, who who is even supplying them, right? 
how is there any reason for someone to want to supply that over anything else? I guess it's highly bottable. Am I really buying it from bots? Here, I'll buy the first group for three. That's fine. And then I'll make a listing for two. It's gonna take me forever to pound through these anyway. There they all are. Okay. Doing this on Iron Man is just, it sounds awful to me. Awful and uninteresting. All right, let's do it. Uh, it looks like we want to get to level nine with air essences and that unlocks earth runes. And then I'm gonna to have to look up where to find the earth talisman, which again, I, I think I'm fine with looking up where to get it since it could be from any mob in the game, but we'll go find a mob to fight, and then fighting it might be fun to watch. Um, see if we can train up attack a little bit. But uh, it's going to take a while to get to 9, so I know I've been talking a lot because this is my first exposure to runecrafting. And I kind of wanted to get my thoughts out there about it, but I think it's, it's time to enjoy your fast forwarding again. I'll see you in a bit. Runecraft level 6. Runecrafting 7. You know, I think there's a lot of factors that contribute to making the pure essence so miserable and why I feel so okay with just buying it. Like, the fact that it is a commodity that's been driven down to nearly one gold. <laughs> Per item, the fact that you need thousands of them, the fact that it's one resource that you need the entire time, there's not like different versions of essence for different kinds of runes, at least as far as I can tell. Wow. I need to research like when did the skill get added? Did people hate it when it came out? I noticed it's a free to play skill, which I'm like, really? Is this a skill that you want? Free to play members to see. And maybe that's by design that they want, if they're gonna have bots in the game, they want them driving the price of this to zero so that there's a constant supply of runes in the economy since everyone needs them for everything. And they don't want to depend on just the ones that drop from mobs, but I don't know. This one would be made a little bit easier by having uh, one of those, the rune pouch from. What do you call it? Uh, Slayer? Well, I guess not, though, because it. I don't need the inventory slot once I get here, right? Green crafting eight. Slowly but surely. I need one more level to get Earth, and then we'll go see if we can farm the Earth Talisman. All right, we're doing crafting nine. I guess it's like one trip per level right now. I don't know if that's gonna stay true. I guess we do earth runes next. So I'm gonna go figure out where I can farm. It looks like there's the Alcaride guards can drop it, like a one in 64, which I should be able to manage. It's not so bad of a drop rate. Um, Can craft these rings of dueling, so uh, take that. Guess I'll put that in consumables since it's a teleport. Maybe they're all depleted or something. That's why they dropped it. All right, let's uh, let's start by farming this Alkarid thing, which I'll probably do. I'll keep doing strength. Actually, I need more strength. Can't have enough of it, really. And then, while I'm heading over there to fight these guards, uh, I'm gonna see, like, it, if, if it just feels like 27 runes per run, I was like, is that the expectation for the whole game? Are there, are there like, rune quests that make it less miserable, is the question. 
I don't want to read too far ahead, but it's just, it's boggling my mind that it's really that. Oh, fuck, I forgot again. Alright, well, I can kill these goblins super fast. I just one shot my first goblin ever, that's kind of cool. My points and strength paying off. I feel like I had to go back through this series when we're done and count the number of times that I forgot to bring money to stuff, assuming that like I it didn't take up space in my inventory. There's five coins. Found in the palace. Okay. Thought maybe they'd be outside. Big fan, I just got this new prayer at 31, the ultimate strength. Big fan of it. I feel like the problem is you have this issue where like the early versions of the prayers give you plus 5% strength, but like your strength is like 10, so you don't even notice it. And then once it becomes significant and it's a 15% boost and you have a little 34, it's actually very noticeable indeed. Oh cool, they drop herbs, I need those. Strength 35. Multiples of 5 are my favorites. Hey, we gotta rent our weed. It's worth a decent amount of money. 7,700 coins. You're seeing a weird glowing thing. I'm taking screenshots. There's this bug where you can see double the items sometimes. It takes us a while to get this earth talisman. At least we're getting uh, herbs that we'll need later, so. Oh, I'll wash. Strength 36. Getting it up there. I think 40 would be when I finally switch back to attack. My accuracy still feels pretty good right now, but more damage is always good. Especially for leveling up against these, like. Easy enemies. As long as I'm not one-shotting them right. Wiki pegs a drop rate at 1 in 64. We're currently at 48 with no drop. But that's okay, I'm getting tons of herbs and it's all stuff that I need. I might be able to get herb or a bit further up if we keep having to do this with ring crafting. Um That said. I need to take a break soon, so you'll see a jump cut, you'll see this timer stop and me hit stop recording and then come back and continue doing it, so we don't have it before the jump cut, don't worry, we'll just continue doing it once I get Oh shit, well there it is, just when I had to leave too, wow, thanks game. Man, that feels good, <laughs> we're talking like, well we'll be back here for another hour or so, but no, no, it's done. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, no, I'll pop over by the bank, I'll deposit stuff. I, I will go ahead and take my break though, it's be a good clip point. And then um, when we come back, we will go make earth runes, which I think takes us to level, I don't know, 9 to 14. And then we have to do fire from 14 to 23. So we'll, we'll do the earth runes, we'll get to 14. Then I'll go find whichever whatever thing drops the fire talisman and we'll repeat this pattern for foreseeable future. See you in a bit. Hey 
Hey, we're back. We now have the Earth Talisman, so we can continue rune crafting leveling. But while I was away, I was thinking about buying those pure essences, and it doesn't sit right with me. I feel like it's a slippery slope. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell back the ones that I bought, and I'm going to go grind out the ones that I've already used, and then we're going to start over and we're going to earn all our own pure essence instead of buying from the Grand Exchange. It's going to be miserable, but I'm going to shut up during all of it, so it will all be fast forwarded. This might take hours of my time, but I will feel better about it. My, my concern is that if I make an exception for pure essences, it'll be easier for me to make an exception for the next stupid item. And really how much different is, you know, leather, cowhide, from uh, from pure essence. So we'll be back in like an hour or two after I <laughs> pay this debt. Thanks. Okay, so I need to sell these 892 back, cancel my buy order, and then go farm 108 to sell. Because those are the ones I already spent on getting RuneCraft to, was it, 7? God, that's a real skill. Uh, and then once I've sold those 108 to pay back the thing that I regret, I'll then start over and we'll try to build up the 600, 700 pure essences we need to get to like 23. Uh, room crafting, so it's gonna be at least a 64x fast forward, if not more. Here we go. Okay, we have farmed the 108 essences. Now it's just to bring it to the Grand Exchange and we have nearly restored purity of the, <laughs> the philosophy for the channel. Uh, after selling these, I might, the, the one thing that's still kind of gnawing in the back of my head is that mithril gear, so I'll go on a short little quest to buy that mithril gear from vendors and then just immediately sell it on the Grand Exchange. Then we'll be absolved of, of guilt and shame. We're going to compare it to the Bill and Ted after the report, we'll time travel back. You actually have to do the thing after the report, despite what their logic says. But it did happen. It was you who stole my dad's keys. To do this mithril thing, I have to do some googling, so I'll be back shortly. Oh, my uh, internet is actually dead. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and finish researching what we were researching. Once the internet's back up, I'll restart the recording, reveal what I've learned, go take care of all that, and then we'll wrap up runecrafting. And by wrap up runecrafting, I mean spend like over an hour or two farming for pure essence. Be back in a bit. Alright, we're back from the internet outage. Um, I finished my research just a couple more minutes after that. The Mithril Full Helm we already found is a drop and sold, so I think everything was fine with that, but I'll grab another one just to be 100% sure. I'll look that up while we go to do the other ones. The scimitar is sold in Al Karid. The plate body is sold in Varrock. The plate skirt is sold in Al Karid. And unfortunately, the square shield is not sold in shops that I can access, so I have to fight some chaos dwarves in either the Taverly Dungeon or the Wilderness to get it. So we'll be doing that here. Once I have my conscious freed, I can return to Minecraft grinding. Uh, so I think let's go grab the scimitar and the plate skirt first, and then we'll grab the plate body, and then I'll go do this square shield thing while I look up the full helm.
Spot the scimitar. This should be a skirt store here. Oh, wow, that's specific. All right, southeast. Found the Mithril Fall Helm, it's in the Barbarian Village, which I should be able to get to without too much trouble. So we just gotta pop there into the armor shop in Barak. Close. Late body shop. Make that easy on me. Okay. Late body purchased. Let's go grab the full helm. Then we'll figure out what we're doing to fight these Chaos Dwarves. Okay, we got the helmet from the Barbarian Village. I'm gonna go list these. I'm actually gonna list the old ones. It's it's a stupid distinction, but it'll help me with my non-clinical OCD. I'll say that the ones that are currently in my inventory are pure. Untainted. Just have to keep them separate in my inventory. So draw them as notes just to be 100% sure. No, I hit list all. Which which scimitar is the pure one? It's fine. Probably that one. Okay, I've officially repaid the debt of the scimitar, the plate body, the plate skirt, and the uh, mithril full helm. Now we just need to take care of this square shield, which had I known that it was to be such an asshole. Uh, that is Chaos Dwarfs and Taverly Dungeon, so I need to get some equipment to fight them and find out where the hell that is. Hey, defense 33. I didn't realize I was that close. Okay, so I need to hunt down a safe spot for these guys. I'm a big dummy. The reason I couldn't safe spot them across the river before is because I was set to default attack with a melee strike. So my poor character was trying to run. This will work just fine. You can always telekin telekinetic grab and the thing I want actually drops. See you when we're done. Hopefully it's not too...
Okay, emerald. It's worth more than the water rune. Grab it. Tell it kind of grab. Hey, it's a genie. That's cool. I think I'm going to use that on ring crafting. <laughs> Let's just do that now. I like having seen what rune, how bad rune crafting actually is because now I can use genies on it without thinking at all. <laughs> I got nine nature runes from that last tour. It's uh, not too shabby. These guys don't respawn terribly fast. I should start tagging them. Maybe I can see the respawn timer. Ooh, muddy key. I don't know what that does. Yeah. Uh, tell kind of grab it here. Examine money key. Key to a chest. You just open the money chest in the lava maze. Is that right? Looks like it's in the wilderness, not in here. It's interesting though. Keep that in mind. Square shield is listed as a common drop, and it says chaos dwarfs drop it more often than any other enemy. Hopefully that's not hogwash. I guess we'll find it. Another muddy key. Worth a decent amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Andrea. Can't complain about water runes. It's basically paying for itself, right? Mithril bar? That has the word mithril in it. Not quite there yet, though. Good nature rune drop rate. Nine? It's a decent amount of money. I didn't think to look further for better safe spots. It looks like these rocks are where it's at, though. Rather than shooting over the river where I can't loot their bones. Another muddy key. I think I'll just sell those. I think the, the chest you get always has the same stuff in it. So I might need to submit that the uh, drop table on the wiki is incorrect for these guys. I think I will do that either when I am near death and need to teleport out to save my life, or when we reach 60 magic, whichever one comes first. Uh, I might see if there's something else that has a chance of dropping this thing that we might be able to access, we'll see. Looks like there's an NPC in Canifus that can drop it as well, so... NPC might be significantly safer for me to fight as well. Defense 34. It's not a complete waste. We're getting skill ups, right? Because if nothing else, we're stacking up on uh, nature runes, right? The cannabis dude also has uh, herbs on his drop list, so I'm not going to fight him anyway, just for better loot. God, I didn't realize you get like four spells or something crazy at level 60. Looks like they all have weird requirements. But... Bones to beaches. Mithril longsword? Well, that seems to suggest we're on the right track. It's not what we need, though. We'll go ahead and grab it. High Alk it, right? I wonder how the High Alk prices are generated. 
I'll also warp out of here if I get three aggroed on me in a way that I can't safe spot them like we had earlier. They're burning through all my cakes. Keep seeing mithril on these drops and getting excited and going, oh shit. Yeah, 45 drops, or 45 kills and no drop in a hazard, it is not a common drop. We'll do five more dwarves, or the other thresholds I said, and then we'll uh, try this other dude in Cannabis. I might be able to melee the dude in Cannabis, which would be nice. My magic levels are coming really slow right now, but I could probably get strength up a bit. 91% magic though, maybe I should just hang out here until I get it, if I can make it. Especially since you unlock so much stuff at level 60. Yeah, we'll we'll hang out till 60. I think it's doable. But then we'll go if we haven't gotten this shield. So many mithril bars. Those are common, I would say. This is just us paying RNGesus back for making the mithril hatchet drop on like the second kill. Another muddy key. Those are listed as uncommon, and we've gotten four of them. wonder if I'm able to issue corrections to the wiki. I mean, also statistics. 50 dwarves is not a statistically significant data set, but... Magic level 60, right around the 50th dwarf, too. That's our second level 60 skill. It's very, very exciting indeed. Alright, well that means it's time to get out. I saw a green drop. I'm like, is that it? It is not it. So the other place is Canifis. Uh let's see. Got an hour left in the segment. I will I will try the Canifis one until time. And if we don't get it, then uh I will see if we can prioritize the quest. That gets us to a shop that sells the shield. We'll come back to it once I finish the Get Everything to 30 project. I honestly thought that was going to be a quick little sojourn with it saying common drop, but 50 dwarves is not that quick. We did get two levels of defense though, and uh, ma uh, Magic 60, which has unlocked a lot of new spells, so I'll play around with that later. I will deposit all my crap. Switch to a melee build and we'll try this cannabis thing. The fact that this dude will at least drop herbs is, is a good thing. Um, the more herbs I happen to be banking just from doing other content, the more I'm feeling like actually taking herb lord of 30 before starting the quest focus. Now the question's gonna become like, what excuse am I gonna come up with to not do the quest focus once every once everything is 30, including runecraft, herb lore, and farming? Who knows? I do want to do them. But I just I'm super bummed at the notion of missing out on content and the fun breakpoints that happen when you're between levels. Like, as awful as runecrafting is, like going to go take a break and go find the new talisman is actually kind of cool and I would be bummed to skip all that by just doing quests and jumping to level 19 or whatever okay so I was hoping to like get this guy down low and then make him transform but I don't think that's a good idea also not sure if he still drops stuff normally if I kill him in human form. I guess I can kill him in human form a couple times and see what he does drop and figure out what we're doing from there, you know? Huh. Wolf Bones, Wine of Zamorak. Evil Wine for an Evil God. 2038 on the Grand Exchange. Oh, and this dude respawns like instantly. Okay, I mean, it looks like we get some okay money from doing this, if nothing else. Why is the wine of Zamorak worth so much money, though? I don't know, man. His drops are pretty good, even the ones that, uh... You don't need. 
So yeah, just take him with him to the end of the hour. Maybe you can really get strength up a little bit, and then uh, maybe we'll get the thing. Who knows? We'll see. Seems like wolf bones aren't particularly good for burying. Maybe I'll stop burying them and see if I can sell them. Usually bury all the bones you find, right? They only sell for, or they only give you like four XP. They sell for four hundred. You know that's curious enough. I don't know if I could figure that out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna search wire wolf bones. Let me just look at the wolf bones entry on the wiki and see. No shit. Uh, you can use a chisel on wolf bones to produce wolf bone arrow tips. Used in fletching to tip ogre arrows. You're kidding. Can I make those already? Fletching 30? I'll check after he dies. Doesn't show on the list. Crazy. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be paying enough t attention when I edit this to, to, to not speed that part up, but we did this crazy little dance across the map there. Also, 50 steel arrows. Damn it. If that's a fairly common drop, it might be worth it just for the steel arrows. The reveling range later. Oh, I had no idea. We're about to hit hit points 47 any second now. That's cool. And there it is, at points 47. I might get that to 50, that'd be cool. That's where it's like my kingdom for a werewolf slayer task, right? This dude's drop table is super interesting. It's actually kind of fun now, I don't know what he's going to drop next. So far it's all pretty useful stuff, too. Positing the wolf bones. Yeah, I think these can go in materials. It's not completely accurate, but Actually, I think Wine of Samurai, I checked it's an herb order. That's why it's so expensive. Oh, wait, I have to release the... Draw... Release... Pause it. Tools... I need my tools! Alright, back to murdering this guy over and over. Strength 37. I'd love to get the strength 40 so we can switch to attack, but that will not happen in the next 45 minutes. It's pretty slow going at this point. Now, what is it with humanoid enemies and having, like, wild, huge drop tables? Still haven't seen any herbs from him, I think he's supposed to drop them sometimes. Hey, random event after this guy dies. Actually, don't want to do the mind show. If he was the uh, maze, I would. No, thank you. The fact that this dude hasn't dropped any herbs yet, or anything mithril, makes me worry that it's not on his drop table either. Or that it's severely overestimated on the uh, the wiki. So, I don't think we'll be able to atone for our sins this session. I am going to go ahead and finish out the 30 minutes of fighting him, though, because it's pretty decent strength XP for basically zero risk, so we'll see. Maybe we can hit 39 strength before time's up. Speaking of strength, strength 38. I might grab some of those chaos runes back out and experiment with uh, defeating him in werewolf form to see if that changes his drop table. It shouldn't. I don't see why it would. But that's, in, that's my best guess right now for why I'm not seeing herbs or anything like that, you know? I managed to trap him. I'm gonna see if he drops something different as a werewolf. Doesn't look like it. 
Shit, just realize I'm fighting werewolf form Yuri for no reason. Let's uh de aggro him here. I might have to world hop. Damn, dude just straight up drops five iron ore. No kidding. He has a crazy drop table. I keep seeing new stuff. I'm not seeing the thing we're here for, but it's okay. So scatterbrained with the with this. I, my understanding is that's part of the fun. That I, I opened with the least fun part of just having resolved to do nothing but agility for several episodes, but Oh, he dropped poison steel arrows. I did not know that was even a thing. That's cool. It's a bummer I saw all the green stuff on the ground and got excited. Pause at this. Strength 39. One more until we switch to attack. And more poison and steel arrows, that's cool. Oh, and total level 750, that's very cool. So we've technically unlocked worlds that are only accessible to people at 750 or higher skill level. I don't know that we want to go to them. I assume that they're less populated, which can be a good thing. I mean, I'll be free worlds though. It looks like each strength level is only running like 15 minutes at the moment, so I'm actually going to go over on this episode until we hit strength 40. I think I like that better as a stopping point. And then uh, we will pick up next episode with runecrafting, maybe herblore. Maybe herblore. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get to finish atoning for our sins this episode, though. Someone over here got a mithril chain body. So it sounds like they do drop. Maybe. I certainly didn't get it. I think we'll have killed about 50 Yuri's once we get a uh, strength 40. So 100 enemies, no mithril square shield. I think we're gonna have to come up with a different solution to atone for our sins. I'll discuss that when we end the video. It should be soonish. Doing the weird dance with the mirror. There it goes. Strength 40. Alright, we are done after this last kill. Maybe he'll drop it on the last kill. Right. After like 50. Probably not. A few more swings. We'll see what he drops. I'll go deposit stuff and we'll sign off. I should talk over it so it doesn't fast forward so there's some suspense. Cats are starving and begging to be fed. I keep splashing zero. Is this gonna be it? Is he gonna drop it? Nope. <laughs> He's gonna drop nothing. Didn't think so. That would have been wild if he did though. Alright, so here's the deal. Um, I would still like to finish atoning. Atoning for me right now, since we've already paid back all the pure essences, we've paid back all the mithril gear except for the mithril square shield. Uh, I need to get a mithril square shield legitimately and then get rid of it and then I'll feel clean. Um, <laughs> I might actually want to think about atoning for the other stuff we bought. Like, what, what all have we bought? We bought several thousand chaos runes, a uh, few hundred law runes, a few hundred nature runes. Uh, I think that's basically it. Maybe maybe a couple like trivial objects here and there that we could have just gotten from a merchant just as easily. Um, so that might be something we consider once we get to higher level rune crafting and it can actually make our own chaos runes or can find somewhere we can farm our own chaos runes. But that's that's less of a big deal to me. Like those are basically a currency. We'll think about it. Alright, so I think what's going to happen then is 
Next session we're going to start by just grinding out as many of those pure essences as possible for runecrafting. Get runecrafting up to 30. There'll be a break somewhere along the way where we have to form a fire talisman so we can make fire runes. Um, after that I'll see how many leaves we're sitting on for herb lore. I'll just try to burn through all the leaves and make as many of those potions as we possibly can. Not going to push to 30. I still think leveling from quests from herb lore is a good idea because it lets us use more of the leaves that drop randomly and incidentally in dungeons. And then farming I will look at. I don't know what choice I'll make from farming. Um, after that, the first quest I'm going to look at is the one that's going to let me get to the town that lets me buy the Mithril Square Shield. And then... It's okay, Marty. I know, you're starving to death. Do, you, do I have my like sign-off voice? Because you're, you're meowing a lot more than you were minutes ago when I was just talking every few minutes. The cat's ridiculous. Um... I'm going to start with the quest that's going to get us to the town that gets the Mithril Square Shield, and then the next priority will be quests that award Herb Lore experience or Farming experience. Whichever whichever uh, skill we didn't take to 30 is the one we're going to focus on first. So we might not bother with runecrafting as an early focus if we were able to get it to 30. And then I'm just going to start doing the quests in, in the list, basically in order from my spreadsheet. Well, thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time. Bye.